Over a year earlier, she was a normal girl living in the Persian Mede Empire. But now, now things were far different. She had been through a year of beauty treatments after being chosen to be a candidate on the 5th century BC version of The Bachelor. And not just any bachelor, but the king of the empire. And when she saw her opportunity, she seized it and won. She went from regular girl in a big, big empire to queen of that empire. But she was holding something back from the king, and that would place her face to face with annihilation. After some time, the king promoted a man named Haman. And as was the case with these promotions, the king ordered the royal staff at the king's gate to bow down and pay homage to Haman. At the king's order, the entire staff did what they were told, except for one man. His name? Mordecai. His co-workers urged him to bow down as he was told, but he refused. So they did what good staff to the king do. They told Haman about it to see what would be done to their co-worker Mordecai. In addition to telling Haman about Mordecai's disobedience, they also told him about his ethnicity, for he was a Jew. This infuriated the newly promoted Haman, and when he found out that Mordecai was a Jew, and that was why he wasn't bowing before him, he grew indignant, not just toward Mordecai, but toward the entire Jewish ethnic group. He began scheming and went before the king to tell him, there is a certain people dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom who keep themselves separate. Their customs are different from those of all other people, and they do not obey the king's laws. It is not in the king's best interest to tolerate them. Esther 3.8 But he didn't intend on just sharing this information with the king. He intended on making the king's life much easier by also giving him a solution to the problem as well as a little incentive on going with his plan. If it pleases the king, let a decree be issued to destroy them, and I will give 10,000 talents of silver to the king's administrators for the royal treasury. Esther 3.9 The king was pleased with Haman's plan and told him to execute it. The destruction, death, and complete annihilation of the Jewish population in the Persian Mede Empire was ordered to take place on the 13th day of the 12th month of the Jewish calendar, between February and March on our calendar. And no, this isn't a scene out of the latest dystopian film. This is straight from scripture. When Mordecai, the Jewish man who started this whole thing, found out about the order, he panicked and was overcome by fear. He knew that there was one person who could change this order and get it rescinded. Who was it? It was none other than the new queen, Esther. See, Mordecai was Esther's legal guardian and cousin. He raised her because her parents had died when she was young. When the news of the order reached Esther, she was deeply afraid. She was safe, though, as long as her secret didn't get out. She hadn't told anyone of her ethnicity by Mordecai's command. Her mind immediately went to Mordecai and she sent a messenger to speak with him. When the messenger reached Mordecai, he shared with the messenger all the details of the deal Haman made with the king. Esther didn't know what she could do, for appearing before the king unmasked could result in death. Mordecai then responded through the messenger that her fate was with the Jews and that she couldn't escape the order. She would be found out. He went on, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Esther 4, 14. Esther had a decision to make. Would she risk her life in hopes of saving her people, or would she take her chances and remain quiet? This is what Esther said to Mordecai through the messenger. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days or nights, and I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Esther 4.16. Her decision was made. She was ready to die if it came to that. After three days of fasting, she went on her way toward the royal courtroom where the king was. As she approached, she stopped and stood still. She was able to be seen, but she remained outside of the courtroom. And then it happened. 
he saw her. And when he did, he motioned for her to come to him. As she approached, he asked her a question. What is it, Queen Esther? She responded, If it pleases the king, may the king and Haman come today to the banquet I have prepared for them. Esther 5, 3 and 4. The king was ready for the banquet and immediately called for Haman so that they could take part in what was prepared for them. During the banquet, the king was enjoying himself, drinking wine, and asked Esther what it is that she would like for him to do for her. She answered with another request for them to attend another banquet the next day. The king agreed, and Haman went ecstatic. The next day, Haman and the king came to Esther's banquet that she once again prepared for them. And once again, the king asked Esther what he could do for her. Esther answered, If I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my petition and spare my people, this is my request. For I and my people have been sold to be destroyed, killed and annihilated. If we had merely been sold as male and female slaves, I would have kept quiet because no such distress would justify disturbing the king. Esther 7, 3 and 4. The king was furious that someone was trying to harm his queen. He asked Esther who it was that wanted to do her harm. And then Esther looked at Haman and told the king, him, the king got up and was extremely angry. He left the room they were in. Meanwhile, Haman was begging Esther to take back what she had said about him and spare his life. Just as the king was walking back into the room, Haman fell on top of Esther. We're not sure if he slipped or if he was trying to hurt her, but perception is everything. And the king ordered for Haman to be hanged. After Haman was no more, Esther spoke to the king again and asked him to revoke the edict that was written ordering for the destruction of the Jews. He agreed that day. Esther saved her people from utter destruction in the Persian Mede Empire. When opportunity crosses your path, will you have the courage to act? That's the question Esther had to answer and that's the question we must answer. She went from rags to royalty and used her position to save her people. Each one of us are in positions that allow us to courageously act on the behalf of others, but will we? The conviction to do what is right is only worth something when that conviction is acted upon. We can say we believe this and we believe that, but if we do not act, we are deceiving ourselves. So take today and begin looking for opportunities to act on behalf of others. Encourage someone, help someone, speak hope to someone, Share Christ with someone. See your opportunity and seize it. Do something.